Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jake Mercury, and I got to tell you a little bit about my week seven credit card strategy. Yes, we're going to be doing it weekly now instead of yearly because, uh, I mean, I told you guys I found the best credit card strategy of 2023 and 2024, but I had to keep updating it. So guys, I just got back. It's a nice Monday afternoon on my lunch break, and I figured I would sit down here and tell you a little bit about how I feel when it comes to the credit card game. No, I'm not gonna be getting too emotional this video, so that's okay for you. A little, you can avoid the cringe for today. But guys, I am gonna talk about this Turkish Airlines Miles and Smiles Redemption. It's getting uh, a little bit in my head, okay? Because now that this is, now this, this Turkish Airlines Miles and Smiles Redemption, or no, shall I say, devaluation is happening, not redemption. I've been thinking a little bit about some, uh, some aspects of my strategy, and one of them has to do with the Venture X, because now that Venture X is looking a little bit worse. And what do I mean by that? Well, guys, as you know, my name is Jake Mercure, but not only that, I like to use the Venture X to transfer my miles to Turkish Airlines to book United flights domestically in the United States to travel around. And now, since there is no longer the 7,500 mile redemption with Turkish Airlines miles and smiles as of, it's gonna be a couple of days, February 15th, I'm now gonna to have to spend 10,000 miles to get this same exact redemption to get the United flights, right? So I'm not gonna be able to get it for 7,500 miles anymore. And you know, people are like, yeah, well, it's not a big, not a big deal, right? Who uses Turkish? But guys, you know, the thing is, Turkish Airlines was a really good sweet spot, okay? And, and it has to do with the fact that I'm able to beat my own strategy. And what does that mean, okay? Because you might get a little confused. Yes, so beating my own strategy. Well, let's just say I have a floor. I, Jake Breaker, have a floor. But it's not that floor, okay? What am I doing, dude? It's not even funny. It's the Chase Sapphire Reserve, guys. It's 1.5 cents per point. I can get a 1.5 cent per point minimum redemption, okay, with anything. Anything domestically, internationally, which I probably wouldn't do, but it's about the domestic flights, yes. So 1.7 cents per point minimum floor is with my Chase Sapphire Reserve, and that means that I have to beat that specific uh, cent per point value with any sort of redemption, anything. Literally anything I redeem has to be is greater than 1.5 cents per point in week seven and 2024, yes. And so what the whole Turkish Airlines Miles and Smiles thing did for me was I was able to beat that cent per point figure, domestic United States flights, ironically on the one card that has, domestic, that has no domestic transfer partners. Funny how that works, right? But uh, here's the thing, guys. 7,500 miles for, a, for a, a freaking flight that cost you 140 bucks. That's, that's greater than 1.5 cents per point. I mean, I don't need to do the calculation for you, okay? It's greater than 1.5 cents per point. I've been redeeming Turkish Airlines for United flights probably like five, six, seven times now, and I've I've been getting like 1.7, 1.8, 2.1. Dude, I got freaking over four once. And I know that's kind of weird. Yeah, I literally got over four. It was, it was a weird airport in like a ski town, Montrose Airport. So it was kind of weird. I don't know. United somehow flew directly there and there was a saver, saver award and the flight was like $400. But I got it for 7,500 miles. So yes, guys, okay. So what am I going to do? My strategy is all messed up again. Um, I guess I'll tell you a little bit about it. Some of you guys like to listen to me think. That's kind of cool. I'm actually so happy you do that because I like, I really, I, here's the thing, guys. I haven't been get, I haven't been on all of your comments, okay? I know you're listening and I, I know you're responding. I was just traveling for a sec, but I read every single one of those comments, literally every single one of those comments, and I will respond. Just give me some time, okay? I also love hearing what you guys have to say. It helps me and you can help yourself. So here's, here's what I'm thinking. <sighs> it's a good one. So... So now that the Venture X is a little bit worse because Turkish Airlines made this devaluation, right? The, the, the flights are not gonna be 7,500 miles anymore. They're gonna be 10,000 miles for domestic flights. And that was my little sweet spot, okay? It's, it's, it's the Star Alliance thing. But yes, okay, you're probably like, get on at the point. Yes, all the other flights too, the business and the economy with Turkish Airlines, those are also devalued. The whole chart is. You're gonna take a look on it on the screen and take a look while I talk. So you guys can see the, the, uh, the uh, you, you guys see it, the, the domestic flights are, it says, it says 15,000. Well, that's 15,000 times two. It, show, it used to show the round trip 
So it was round trip uh, on their award chart was 7,500 each way times two is 15,000. But now it's showing you 10,000 on the new award chart for the domestic transfer partner or domestic Star Alliance uh, partner reward chart. Redemptions, it's crazy, it's a lot of words. But it's 10,000. See how it's 10,000 now for a one way? It's, it, it would be 20 if they showed you the, the round trip, but they're just showing you the, the freaking uh, uh, the one way. So here's the thing, guys. I can beat that. Well, actually, no, I can't. So I can't beat that. The only way I could beat that is with the Shea Sapphire Reserve, which is fine. That's in my strategy now. I told you that. So here's my new thing, okay? Here's what I'm planning on doing. So I have a ton like an absolute ton of freaking Amex points, man. I got a lot of membership rewards points. And the thing is, I'm gonna try this out, okay? I'm gonna try this out, but I'm gonna try to beat 1.5 cents per point figure with Air Canada Aeroplan. And how am I gonna do that? Well, sometimes flights, they might cost you some money. And uh, if I can get a flight over 1.5 cents per point with Air Canada Aeroplan, because I can use Air Canada Aeroplan the same exact way as I use Turkish Airlines Miles and Smiles, any United Saver Award will show up, honestly, more, more, more freaking reliably, reliably in Aeroplan, because Aeroplan's also just, if it works better, and you can book for your friends and family and girlfriends and stuff like that too, and guy friends or whatever, freak, I don't know. But guys, so, so yes, Air, Air Canada Aeroplan, 12,500 miles, or let's just say 12,500 points transferred to Air Canada, Air Canada Aeroplan will get you a one-way on United Saver Award. So that's really good, right? It's, 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 tw it's a little bit more than Turkish now that Turkish is 10,000, but I'm kind of willing to, I'm kind of willing to do that because first of all, I only have like 30,000 uh, Capital One miles left. I just got my 10,000 miles, uh, my anniversary miles, but... Um, you know, it's not, it's only 10,000, but guys, I'm all over the place. Stick with me here. I'm trying to get to the point. The point is that it's literally worth using Air Canada Aeroplan now that the, the margin is a little smaller between Turkish and Air Canada Aeroplan. They're doing the exact same thing, bro. They're booking the exact same United Star Alliance award of, of flight. Okay. D domestic U S economy flights on, on United. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to do that now. I think I'm no longer going to be using Turkish. It's kind of sad. I can't believe it, man. Thought this would last forever. Should have made a Turkish Airlines Miles and Smiles shirt first, but I don't want to be that guy. Would you guys Would you guys listen if I... Uh, you guys can skip ahead. I, I'm going to make a sponsor sometime. Or I don't know, guys. Don't get mad, but I might include a sponsor on this channel soon, I think. Just don't get mad. I mean, let me know if it's cool or not. I'll, I'll do it. If, if, if you guys say it's not cool, then I might, maybe I won't do it. But Because I hate that stuff too, man. Don't listen. I hope they're not listening to me. But guys, anyway... Turkish Airlines is heating down, so is the Venture X, and now it's time for me to think about what's next, okay? And honestly, I've been thinking about airline loyalty recently. So airline loyalty, what does this mean, Jake? Well, airline loyalty is something that maybe you can get a couple upgrades, maybe you can get a free check bag, maybe you can board a little bit earlier if you want. Well, guys, let me tell you a little bit about what just happened, okay? It's a little embarrassing. So I was just flying on United, and it was the the United Basic Economy flight that I booked with Turkish, Air well, it's economy, with Turkish Airlines Miles and Smiles. I did that whole thing I just talked about. I did that. I flew literally two days ago. And of course, I'm in the middle seat. Of course I am. And it's just unfortunate because I'm in the middle seat in the back because that's just how it goes. But you know what? I'm getting tired of that. I'm feeling like, you know, I check a lot of bags. I freaking have checked I'm, I'm not like a bag guy, but I'm a ski guy, bro. So I bring my skis with me. I don't need a lot of clothes. I just need to bring my skis. And that costs me 35 bucks every time, okay? And I do have the Amex Platinum card. I'm able to get the $200, you know, incidental credit. I'm, dude, I'm already at 175 on that. Literally almost done. It's February 12th, okay? That's freaking awesome. So that's no problem for me. But after that, I'm thinking, I want to be able to get free check bags. It's for skiing and for moving. I keep moving everywhere for some reason. But guys, the point is I was sitting in this middle seat on that United flight and I was thinking to myself, God, this, this just sucks, bro. Like, I'm just tired of this. I'm so tired of this, man. I want to freaking feel that, econ I, not economy, that luxury, dude. I want to feel that, you know, first class or like, or get upgraded somehow, you know? It's so annoying, guys. Have you ever walked onto a plane? Well, first of all, I was hanging out in the Centurion Lounge for way too long, and they're like boarding group D, and I'm like, oh shit, I'm like pulling up right when they're boarding group like E or something, bro. There's like 10 people left, and they're cl closing the doors. So I get on the line, and I'm like, after I grabbed a couple Diet Cokes from the lounge, because you know, we gotta stay hydrated on the plane, you know what I mean? 
So I get in the line and I'm walking down the jetway to get on the plane and uh, this just this is just pisses me off, bro. It's just frustrating, okay? Because not only am I one of the last people to board, I'm also looking to my left and then to my right and I see that United Plus, that Economy Plus, you know that like like that little extra leg room and kind of comfier seats in the front ish, not first class, but the one after. It's empty. Okay, it's freaking empty. And it sucks because all these people would have would have boarded already, man. They would have already boarded, but guess what? I'm freaking walking right past it. They're all freaking empty. There's like 15 seats empty, and I'm crowding into the middle seat in the back of the plane. Every single regular economy is just full of people, dude. And they just have to and they leave this empty. And I'm like, are they not upgrading people? Like, can we can I just freaking ask to sit there? Like, like let, let me just try to ask. And I try to ask the United flight attendant that's walking by because I'm dying to taste that first class or economy class or you know whatever it is. And the dude's like, um, yeah, yeah, let me, let me check on that for you. And he comes back with like the phone and he's like, um, I don't have your card on file, but it's gonna be $189. I'm like, dude, I'm not trying to pay for this. And he's like, oh yeah, so it's gonna cost money, for, I'm sorry. And I was like, but there's no one sitting there. He's like, yeah, it's, it's our policy. And I'm like, this is so frustrating, dude. I should have just sat there, okay? Dude, here's the thing, guys. Asking is probably not gonna work. You can try. It was just embarrassing. Everyone's turning their head looking at me like because I had to flag the guy down like twice. Just maybe sit there. Have you guys ever tried just sitting in these seats? I know I'm getting into it right now, but like have you ever just tried to sit down and see what happens? Like like if they're empty and you're boarding last because you've been hanging out in the lounge, like like having a bunch of food and you know what I mean, and get on the plane and, and you're like one of the last people. I mean, clearly these people would have boarded first, right? They would have boarded in group A. So I'm thinking, there no, there's no more people really for the, for the, it's a very low chance that all these seats are gonna be filled. And you know, if somebody does come and they're like, oh, you're in my seat, I'll just be like, oh, frick, sorry. Uh, I'm, in, I'm, in, uh, I'm in the row behind you. I'm, I'm in row seven, not six. And so that's just, you know, I should have just sat there. I would have had the whole row, literally the whole area to myself, but I ended up just getting squeezed in there. And then the guy came back and he's like, oh, there's an aisle seat open up behind you. And I was like, you know what, fine, I'll move there. And I moved. I left my middle seat, everyone's looking at me and I push my bag under the seat, I sit down. <laughs> I look to my right and this lady's like, hi. And I'm like, uh, hi, it's, sorry, I just have to sit here. And she's like, oh, uh, okay. Cause like, dude, we're like about to push back. Like no one's clearly getting on the plane. I just pulled up and sat next to this lady because the flight attendant said I could, I guess. But it was so awkward, man. There's like a baby next to me. It was like the baby seat kind of. Like they, I know it was a lap infant, so like they didn't buy a seat, but they got lucky. This is what happened. The, the girl that was next to me got lucky and there was no one in the, her middle seat and her son was on the window and so she moved to sit next to her son and left that other one open like past the baby back and forth because her freaking sister was on the, across the aisle holding the baby and I'm sitting there in the middle between them and I'm like, oh God, dude, what did I do? I'm freaking ruining everything now. She was chill though, we had a good conversation, but I told her, I was like, dude, I was trying to upgrade it first and get all that and it didn't work. She probably was like, this guy's such an idiot, but he's pretty chill, so. Yeah, it ended up working out for me, but yeah, I think having an airline loyalty card would be kind of nice. United Mileage Plus, um, what is it, the United Club? What is that, that one could be, no, United Explorer, maybe. Dude, I'm probably not. You wanna know why I'm not? Uh, first of all, I can get the free check bags on United from my Platinum card, and second, uh, well, technically I could just do the United Travel Bank thing, because you guys know you can use United Travel Bank to cover the $200 credit. I did that for last year, but I've been doing it actually organically this year, so I could have technically had $400 of United Travel Bank credit if I just went ahead and um, figured out how to get that check bag like covered organic, like, for, like, co like really for free, not just like a credit. Because then I could have just uh, saved the, the um, travel bank. I, I would have saved the... the um, incidental credit for the travel bank or maybe some sort of Southwest, you know, you know how it goes with Southwest, you could do that too, but, um, so guys, basically I have all these bags covered anyway and it's really not that big of a deal. I feel like I don't really need to get a card just so I could have my bags fly for free. Plus, what am I gonna do? Be able to board one or two boarding groups early and sit down longer? It's like, dude, I'm freaking trying to eat and hang out and like, like get some freaking cookies and stuff and put it in my bag and maybe grab a couple of DCs and throw it in my bag so I could have some something to have on the plane. But you guys gotta understand, you know, once you taste a little bit of luxury, it's hard to go back. And now that I've been tasting all this luxury and all these different airline lounges, specifically the one I just went to last week, the Sapphire Lounge, you know, the new one in JFK, yeah, it's, it's tough. It's tough to want to sit anything in economy and go back to the, to the freaking 
the I'm trying to think of something funny to say I can't but it's just the regular old lifestyle you know the, the peasant lifestyle as some people put <sighs> but I don't know man is it really all worth it oh yeah the sapphire lounge was not that good the wi-fi was out you guys know it should be better than that but yeah that was a little annoying but and there's some loud people in there I had to work in there for three hours so I was like working from home in there it was a little frustrating but I made it, and now I'm back, and now you guys are going to get to enjoy my amazing content that some people like. I guess it's amazing. I don't, I don't want to toot my own horn, but it's a lot of fun. I like making it, so that's about it. Um, looking at my chart here, there's a couple words. I said all of them, and if you guys have to say anything to me, you can always let me know in the comments. I thank you guys for watching, and if you really want to support the channel, I got links in the description, of course, because who doesn't? So yes, that's it. Have a good day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.